Hey, this is Wolf from Armoury Train, and since it's the last day of February, I thought I'd probably better build something. I mean, a leap year only comes around every four years, and it's been at least three leap years since I've last built any significant piece of scenery. So here I am. Now, Warhammer Fences, kind of cool. But before I get into that, you may notice that I'm not in my workshop. That's because over the last three weeks of absolutely torrential downpour, my workshop is flooded. It has a coating of mud all the way across the floor, and there's mould and mildew, and I need to pull it all out, give it a hose out, and kind of start again. Lucky me. Anyway, Warhammer fences. Fences are important for Warhammer. They, you know, impede the enemy. They divide things up. But a lot of the time they're just not in scale. I have a couple of examples here. I think this one was a Raoul Partha piece originally. It's a resin base with pewter stakes that clip into it. So that, that's kind of a cool little piece. And then Games Workshop in one of the box sets came up with these Dwarven wall sections, which aren't bad. I mean, they're very fancy and fussy, but they're not bad. And then after that, they came up with their scenery packs. Now remember, this is going back about 10 years because I haven't wargamed in an age. But you had things like this fence, which is nice and detailed. You know, they did different types of fences. They even did short little bits here and there. But these fences came in a scenery pack that was worth like $150. Which is way expensive for your normal wargamer. So what's the alternatives? Well, I bought a whole lot of castle moulds from Her Starts, And they make really nice plaster blocks. Like this one here. Now, when I mix the plaster, I actually put a concrete render colour in with the plaster, so if it chips, it doesn't look white and horrible. So I've got feet and feet and feet of these walls. Uh, along the same line, I uh, bought hedges. I think this was a K&M brand hedge. I don't even know if they still exist or not, and they're all mounted on timber. But today, viewers, we're going to do a wattle fence. Yep, something nice and simple that any farmer could throw together and wood to control livestock. Now, a wattle fence will control your ducks and chickens and cows, you know, sheep. About the only thing it won't contain are pigs that'll dig in under it and goats because goats are smart and they get away from everything. Now, before we start the build, i just give a shout out to Miscast, who's an Australian train builder, who does some very, very nice work. When this video is over, there'll be a card at the end, so go check him out. His channel is a hundred times larger than mine, but he's inspired me to make these walls and some other scenery you'll see soon. Also, I've got a bit of a drawback. I've got a decent sized hand. So what, I hear you say, everyone's got big hands. Yeah. This is a normal sized dinner plate. This is my hand on a normal sized dinner plate. You see, my hand gets in the way of the camera a lot. So please excuse me if you don't see some of the bits and pieces. Okay, now to rearrange the camera and let's build this fence. Okay, so materials you're going to need for this build are a couple of skewers. A straw broom, preferably one that's at least a couple of years old and no one's noticed that you've knocked off. You're not going to use a huge amount of it, but if you don't have to explain to your partner or parents where the straw broom went, that's always a bonus. Okay, now I'm going to glue all of this together just with PVA glue and I've decanted some into this bottle lid because I don't need the whole lot. And then you're going to need a base. I was originally going to use tongue depressors, but I discovered that they split 
when I try to drill into them. So instead of that, I went and grabbed some 3 mil MDF and just cut it down on my bandsaw, rounded off the ends on the belt sander and drilled a whole bunch of holes through it. Now this bit of 3 mil MDF is 15 centimeters long, which is about six inches. And I think it's got nine holes in it. Okay, cut your skewers into pieces about two and a half centimeters long. Then dip them in the glue and stick them in the holes. Isn't that complicated? Now I've just been watching the gay and lesbian Mardi Gras on TV from Sydney. And I am hugely, hugely impressed with all their levels of creativity. But I may have also had a number of rums while watching and cheering them on. So, don't mind me. Only about three sheets to the wind. But that's good for making scenery, right? Okay, now, if they're a little bit tight for the holes, you've obviously drilled your holes too small. But you can use a flattish surface just to help seat them in the hole correctly. Okay, so your piece should look like this. Wait for it to dry. While it's drying, grab a pair of cutters. I have these ones I picked up for about $20 at Bunnings. Um, you can use anything you like though, as long as it will cut the straw broom. And trim a number of bristles from the very outside of the broom. Don't, don't start in the middle guys, from the outside. Now sadly, you might need about this amount to make up some fences. Now these are way too long. When you think about it, a wattle length might be up to four meters, possibly a bit shorter. So what I'm gonna suggest is cutting this into three. What you're after are lengths between five and eight centimeters. Now, so they don't fly away everywhere, I'm going to cut them into a container. Yay me. Right, now that you've got a mess of straws and your piece is dried, grab a brush or a toothpick, just something to spread some glue around, and paint some glue on both sides of each of the uprights. Now that you've painted your piece, grab your first straw and weave it in and out. Now my fingers are too big to do this, so I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and just use them to press the straw down to the bottom. And then continue. And then every other layer, do it opposite. Now, don't worry if it's looking a little bit rough. It was, after all, built by farmers. And so on and so on. Until you get to one that looks like this. When it's at this stage, you want to get your PVA glue and brush PVA glue over the whole thing, which will help hold it all together. It won't come apart. Now, if you've got any particularly jagged pieces, just grab your cutters or a pair of scissors and 
give them a bit of a trim. So yes, do that both sides. And then when it dries, give it a coat of paint. Now, I only use the most expensive paint. You know, sarcasm turned on. So I undercoated mine with some export paint from Super Cheap Auto. I think this can cost me like $4. Happy days. So, it's been sprayed white. Nice and bright. There we go. Then to paint it, what I like to do is to stick it onto a block because I have big hands and they get in the way. So once I blue tack it to the block, I can paint it. Now with this one, paint it with some raw sienna. Sorry, no, I'll paint it with some burnt umber to start with. Give it a nice dark base coat. Then when it's dry, I'll give it a dry brush of burnt sienna. And yes, I could use Games Workshop paints or other model paints, but they seem really expensive to use to paint scenery with, so I don't. Then I mix a lighter brown color to paint all the stakes with because they're one type of timber. And then for all the wattles that are woven through, I mix up a light grayish brown and give that a quick coat. Once you've done that and stuck a bit of grass on it, it should look something like this. So that's a nice simple build from Putting your stakes in to starting the weave to finishing the weave and painting it with PVA glue to undercoating it all white and then to finish it off. So I think overall this has come up to be not a bad piece of scenery and it's nice and rugged and you know, it's not going to just fall apart during gameplay. About the only things I didn't do was bevel the edge of the timber, because this will be used for D&D instead of wargaming, so having a beautiful table isn't quite as important to be seamless. And I've thoroughly enjoyed this, so once again I'll thank Miscast for inspiring me to get back into some scenery building. And hey, this is Wolf for Armory Train, saying go out and make something.